Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of uh, our September Surgery Symposium here at the New York uh, City Health and Hospitals Kings County Institution. My name is uh, Dr. Angelo Reyes. I'm the Director of Thoracic Surgery here uh, at our hospital, and I'm here to show you a little bit about what we do and the diseases that we treat and what our focus is in patient care. I've prepared a short presentation to show you, and I'd be very happy to start that now. Here at the uh, New York City Health and Hospitals Kings County Division of Thoracic Surgery, we're made up of two surgeons, myself, and my colleague, Dr. Jaime Yun, both of us are per very well experienced thoracic surgeons. We've been in practice uh, individually for a combined total of more than 60 years. We treat a wide range of thoracic conditions and diseases, and whenever possible, we perform minimally invasive surgeries. That is, we try to do surgeries with small incisions, uh, with cameras, and in this way, the incisions are smaller, so there's a lot less post-operative pain for the patient. They have shorter hospital stays and faster recovery times and faster return to their regular activities of daily living. This is a short list of the conditions that we treat. Primarily, we treat uh, lung cancer and all stages of lung cancer, from early stage cancer to later stage cancers. Some cancers we operate on immediately, other cancers we work on with our colleagues in the oncology and pulmonology departments uh, for some preoperative treatment prior to surgery. Uh, but we offer the full gamut of care uh, in terms of lung cancer, and we'll get into a little bit more of that later. We also treat benign lung tumors, uh, esophageal cancer, and again, we, we treat esophageal cancer in a multidisciplinary fashion and with a strong focus on minimally invasive approaches. In addition, we also treat a multitude of benign esophageal disorders, strictures, achalasia, which is a, a narrowing and a tightening of the junction between the esophagus, which is the tube that connects your mouth to your stomach, and the stomach itself. So we operate on sometimes when that junction, that valve between the esophagus and the stomach is too tight, it becomes very difficult to eat, and we help people with that particular condition. In addition, we also treat hiatal hernias, and again, we do this in a minimally invasive fashion and repair everything from either the abdomen or a thoracic approach, depending on the type of hiatal hernia that uh, is presented to us. In addition, we also treat a wide variety of mediastinal tumors and diseases. The mediastinum is the portion of your body that's just behind your breastbone. And oftentimes, there's tumors in there that derive from glands that should have kind of gone away, melted away from when you were a baby to uh, your adulthood. And that gland's called a thymus. So sometimes this persists in some adults and can cause neurological disorders such as myasthenia gravis. This is probably the most common one. And, we, and surgery is a, a good remedy for myasthenia. It, it helps to alleviate a lot of the symptoms and certainly decrease the amount of medication that those types of patients receive. So we treat that as well. Again, we do this through either a, a minimally, minimally invasive or a more standard open approach depending on the size of the tumor. We also treat a wide range of pleural diseases. Pneumothoraces, which is a collapsed lung. Uh, that happens sometimes in people that have smoked for a long time. Also, it can happen in younger people that have congenital uh, abnormalities of the tissue of the lung and that causes the lung to collapse. And so we treat that. Uh, Pleural effusions, that's liquid in the lung, and that can come from a multitude of reasons, pneumonias, uh, infections. And sometimes these infections become very, very dense and complicated and would need surgery to kind of clean them out, and we do that as well. Also, 
we treat a wide range of chest wall tumors. These sometimes necessitate larger chest wall resections and reconstructions. We do this work often uh, with the help of our colleagues in the plastic surgery department because they assist us with the reconstruction. In addition, uh, we also treat hyperhidrosis, and that's a disease of excessive sweating. It's a sympathetic nerve disorder, and there's surgery to fix that. We do that here as well. And again, that's done, that's almost an ambulatory procedure. We can do that procedure uh, early in the day, and the patient, with any luck, if everything goes well, will either go home later on that afternoon or the following morning. We treat a wide range of diaphragmatic diseases. The diaphragm is the muscle that controls how you breathe and also separates your chest from the abdominal contents. Sometimes there's tumors in the diaphragm. Sometimes there's congenital holes in the diaphragm. People are born with these holes, and we fix all of that. We also work with our pulmonary colleagues in terms of uh, protecting and treating airway narrowing which can come from a multitude of reasons. Uh, these strictures, and the fancy name for it is tracheal stenosis. The trachea is uh, the main airway that connects your nose and your mouth to your lungs, so air can get to your lungs uh, and oxygen can get into your blood. So we, again, do that uh, with uh, stents, which are wire-expandable cages that help to alleviate these strictures. And also, we work with the trauma team here at, King, at uh, Kings County Hospital. The, this institution is a level one trauma center, so we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to assist our colleagues in the trauma department uh, with any kind of thoracic uh, or cardiac trauma. And we've done that uh, with great success. As I mentioned earlier, the surgical techniques that we use all have a minimally invasive focus. We try to use small incisions, cameras, and um, specialized instruments to do the kind of work that 10, 15 years previously everybody used to do And you know, when I was training. A lot of uh, institutions would do this uh, through large incisions that cause tremendous amount of pain and discomfort and long-term disability to the patients. With a minimally in focus, what, focus, what this allows us to do is um, we can operate on many more elderly and very ill patients that previously would not have been able to undergo any kind of surgical procedure just because of the nature of the trauma of the technique used at that time. And so I think this has really helped our patient population here in Brooklyn. At the moment, the kind of minimal, minimally invasive lung surgery that we do is what's called video-assisted thoracic surgery, or short, we call it, we just say VATS, V-A-T-S. Uh, in the future, both Dr. Yun and myself are fully credentialed in robotic-assisted thoracic surgery, and we do have a robot here at the New York Health and Hospitals Kings County Institution. And, uh, the robotic thoracic surgery program is one of our goals in the future, and Hopefully, that'll be rolled out in mid to late 2022. What a minimally invasive focus allows us to do is we certainly have less blood loss. That's clear. Definitely less postoperative pain in narcotic use, which in an elderly or very sick patient is a huge and tremendous advantage. It allows us minimally invasive focus also allows us to have less people on ventilators postoperatively, which again is a tremendous uh, advantage for our patients. Definitely shorter hospital stays and a faster recovery and return to full activity. I wanted to show you a little bit about what I'm actually talking about with these th thoracic surgical techniques. Over here uh, on the left, this is kind of the incision that would be used for standard, classic, traditional thoracic surgery. It's a large incision in the chest. Oftentimes, uh, a large portion or at least a window of a rib is removed to allow the chest cavity to be opened. A large metallic retractor is placed in this incision and cranked open 
So you can imagine that's a severe amount of trauma to the chest wall, which causes a lot of pain and discomfort to the patients and a lot of complaints postoperatively as well, numbness, persistent pain, things like that. So 15 or 20 years ago, really, one of the major revolutions in my particular specialty was the move towards minimal, minimally invasive, invasive thoracoscopic surgery. And by thoracoscopy, that's a fancy word for just putting cameras inside the chest so you can see and the cameras act like your eyes uh, in the traditional sense so we can see inside the chest and, and operate on the patients. This is what a VATS or video-assisted thoracic surgery kind of inc our incision pattern looks like. There's a smaller incision here. These are the camera ports. This one in the middle is what we usually use for the camera because, you know, just as in standard surgery, your eyes are in the middle. And geometrically, your brain is wired to understand that your vision comes from the center. These two holes here are one for the, the instrument that would serve as your left hand. This particular incision over here is for the instrument that would serve as your right hand. And so with all of this apparatus, what we do is what they used to do 15 or 20 years ago through a larger incision such as this. Obviously, it's easy to see why there's a lot less postoperative pain because there's a lot less trauma to the patient. This incision uh, here, we have to sometimes put other instruments inside the chest. And also we need an incision, say if we're doing an operation for lung cancer and we have to take out a portion of the lung, these incisions here are too small to take out uh, the, the portion of the lung that we would remove. So we would need a larger port to, to exit the specimen from the operative field. So that's what this is all about. In the future here, we want to do robotic assisted procedures, which are even more minimally invasive than a standard VATS procedure. And you can see here, the incisions are much smaller as well. The advantage of robotic assisted over VATS is that the instruments that we would use in this particular surgery all are specially wristed instruments. And by that, I mean the instruments actually have a mechanical wrist uh, that allows you to rotate it the full 360 degrees that, that the human wrist moves. So uh, it certainly gives you a lot more angles to work on than standard straight instruments of, of a VATS procedure. And it's also much less invasive. So it's a huge advantage. And this other picture here on the right is just to give you a sense of uh, what the kind of inside the chest view looks like. This would be the camera here in the middle. Here's your instrument for your left hand. This is your instrument for your right hand. Here's your lung that you're working on. And with the anesthesia that we use for these types of procedures, any of these types of techniques, it's a specialized kind of anesthesia that allows us to collapse the lung so we have space to operate in. And the ribs themselves, the rib cage, is what provides the rigidity so that we have room to operate. And all of this is only possible by a kind of multidisciplinary team approach between our surgical side and the anesthesia side. And the anesthesia department here at Kings County is excellent, and we've worked very hard with them to try to maximize our ability to take care of pretty much any kind of patient. These are the support services that we provide. Once you come into our program and once we operate on you and you come into our institution, we have a fully staffed surgical intensive care unit with excellent and extremely well-trained intensivists to watch over you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So someone is always there to watch for you. You're never left alone. We also have a surgical step-down unit. So when, say, you start in the intensive care unit and as you get better, you uh, don't need that level of intensive care but are not quite ready for floor care yet, we have a surgical step-down unit where, again, there are people that watch over you every day, all the hours of every day. We work closely with physical therapy and rehab medicine and social services, so we make sure also 
that whatever needs you might have once you're discharged are fully addressed. Home health aid, home physical therapy, these types of things. Like I said, we have a team approach to patient care, and in, in 2021, 2022, this is the best way of taking care of patients. It's really the only way of taking care of patients. Cancer treatment these days is a multidisciplinary approach, and our kind of work has to be multidisciplinary in order for it to succeed. We work with a wide team of healthcare professionals and services here at the New York City Health and Hospitals Kings County Institution. And this includes pulmonary medicine and, espe and especially a special branch of pulmonary medicine called interventional pulmonary. And so this allows us to get biopsies endoscopically and uh, do other work that previously would have entailed general anesthesia or a surgical procedure, but our interventional pulmonary colleagues can now accomplish some of these smaller procedures uh, with our help and, and uh, assistance. The GI doctors, the gastroenterology department, are critical uh, in the treatment of hiatal hernias, achalasia, esophageal diseases, both benign and malignant, and diaphragmatic diseases as well. Our radiology colleagues uh, offer you advanced imaging, CAT scan imaging, MRI imaging, PET scan imaging, as well as a wide range of interventional radiology techniques that allow for drainage of fluid or biopsies to be obtained in an ambulatory, minimally invasive way. Where previously, five or 10 years ago, this would have entailed a hospital admission and potentially a surgical procedure. We also work closely with our colleagues in the oncology department. The medical oncologists are those specialized doctors that provide chemotherapy if it's needed. And our radiation oncology colleagues will also provide you with radiation therapy if the malignancy has progressed to a point where it needs radiation. These are extremely well-trained and extremely professional individuals that have a wide experience in this particular area. Our outpatient services are readily available. Our thoracic surgery practice is in the E building at the main campus here at Kings County Hospital. This is on Clarkson Avenue. It's on the ninth floor. We're there every Wednesday afternoon from one to five. An appointment would be great, but you don't really need one. Just walk in and if, you're there, if we're there and we'll see you, don't worry about it. I think that's about all I have prepared for you. I just want to remind you again that we're here and we're available. Uh, my name is Dr. Angelo Reyes. My colleague is Dr. Jaime Yun. Our contact number is 718-245-3080. And we're here to help you. Thank you.